I am Kathleen Cotter Clayton, and we're going to talk today about map your path through Right Start Math. Um, this is the kickoff of our winter online conference, and we, we've got three presentations today. I'm the first one, and then we will have three tomorrow, and I'll go through and kind of give you a, a summary at the end. If you want to have your, your uh, video on, you are more than welcome to, but it's not necessary. Um, mute, do mute yourself. And if you want to uh, ask me a question, go through with chat and I'll watch those and we'll go from there. All right, let's go ahead and get started with the first of the series for the Right Start Math online conference. So when we are looking at muting or muting, I got mute in my brain, looking at mapping your path with Right Start Math. Most, not all, but a lot of people will start with level A. Level A is kindergarten with a lot of first and some second grade in it. Now, what age do you start with level A? It depends. Sometimes it's a, a four-year-old, a five-year-old, a six-year-old, Sometimes we've, I, I know probably about 15, two and a half year olds who are actually in level A. Obviously they're very bright ones, but it's more area of when the child is interested. Sometimes a seven-year-old will be starting it, but basically level A is for a brand new, never been used child, and they're starting their math career. When we're done with A, then we go to level B. This will be equivalent to first grade with a lot of second and some third. Level C is going to be second grade with a lot of third and some fourth. Now, let's just say that you're coming in late. You're, you know, you're where you need to be, but you're like, oh, I just heard about Right Start and my child's about second grade and we've done the placement test and this is where they belong. In the very beginning of every level except A, we have the um, review lessons that will show both you and your child how to use the abacus, how to use the materials, what's our way of thinking, but we're going to be doing it quickly because we assume the child knows. So let's just knows what they're doing and they can quickly run through the information that they already know. So for example, level C, we assume they can do addition facts up to 20. So if you're coming in at level C, we're gonna show you real quick how to do it on the abacus. And again, using our approach, but the child already knows how to do their addition. So all it is is just a quick summary using different tools and maybe kind of solidifying things a little bit for the child. After C comes D. Again, this would be more of a third grade with a lot of fourth and some fifth. Level D is where we do multiplication. Uh, it starts to introduce some fractions, um, but, but the bulk of it is multiplication. Level E. Then we go into level F and then G and H. G and H kind of run together. G and H are our middle school curriculum. Um, and they also have a pre-algebra component. So levels A through F are going to be your elementary. And then G and H is your middle school. You can start with our middle school curriculum without any knowledge of A through F. So this is another entry level point. Now, sometimes we have a situation where we've got an older child, maybe two years behind. Let me, let me back up a second. If we have a child who is one year behind, you can still put them in and they'll be fine. Because remember, for example, level D is third grade with a lot of fourth and some fifth. So let's just say you have a fourth grader coming into level D. This will become fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, and then we're ready for high school algebra. So if your child is one year behind our curriculum, you're perfectly fine. But let's just say that your child is now two years or more behind. Well, we don't have time to do levels A, B, and C or C. We need something to go a little bit faster. We don't have time to do this. So instead, what we're going to do is we have a book. It's a new series that's come out. It's called Right Start Tutoring. And what this does is this just solves that big block of a problem. In this case, 
the number sense book covers levels A, B, and C, and it works on your addition facts, your subtraction facts, your four-digit addition, and four-digit subtraction. Now, it's skipping an introduction to multiplication. It's skipping fractions. It's skipping some of the other elements. And, and it, it goes very fast, but it solves the problem. The child who's two or years two years or more behind where they need to be. You know, they're struggling with their facts. Seven plus eight is I have no idea. They don't have time to go back and do levels B and C. So the number sense, the right start tutoring number sense will teach them again, their addition subtraction facts up to four digits. And this one does it in 50 days with no worksheets and they play games. So as soon as you're done with right start tutoring number sense, then you can go into level D multiplication, E higher level multiplication, F is going to get into, uh, actually E is going to have some fractions, F is going to have some higher level fractions, decimals and percents, and continue on. And you've got time to do it. Okay, let's say you've got a child that's farther behind, again, still two years behind where they should be, but maybe their multiplication's gotten a little bit wobbly. They, they're not quite sure with it. So again, we have another Right Start Tutoring book. This is Multiplication and Division, book one. This is going to do your multiplication facts from one times one to 10 times 10. And then it'll do division from 100 down, including remainders. Same thing, no worksheets. You're just playing games. When you're done with this book, then you're ready to go into level E and continue on the path. There's a new book. It's been out uh, maybe two weeks, Right Start Tutoring Multiplication Division Book 2. And what Book 2 does is this will do a four-digit multiplication times two and three digits. And it will also do um, short division and long division. So when you're done with book two, then you can go, maybe you want to go into level E, maybe you want to go into level F. Most people will go into level F. Sometimes if they're way behind, they might just go right into G. So you have to kind of see what's going on with the child. What have they missed? How old are they? What's going on? There's, there's many variables to see how you're going to use the tutoring book and where you're going to put it in. We also have a Right Start Tutoring Fractions book. It's actually fractions in 42 and a half days. And that one does have some worksheets, but they're not as much drill worksheets as exploratory worksheets. The Right Start Fractions is actually, this is actually pulled from levels A, B, C, D, and E, and F. It's actually coming from all of them. And again, it's for the child who maybe fractions is just a complete mystery. So you can kind of see what is needed and where you want to put, you know, what, what needs to be fixed for the child. So looking at this, we've got the path, the right start math path. We also have the tutoring that can kind of help you step onto the path. We also have it in Spanish. We have level A, B, C, D, all done in Spanish. The level D book, she's just finishing it up. Um, I would say it's probably in about a week or two and that will be out. But I don't know if we have it for sale yet, but I know it's really close. So it's it's like I said, if you're looking for level D Spanish, we've got that coming. We also have the Right Start Tutoring Number Sense and the um, book uh, Multiplication Division Book 1 and Fractions have all been translated. We are working as soon as she is done with level D, then we are going to start working on multiplication division book two. So we do have the Spanish. We will continue with levels E, F, and I believe they're working on G and H also. So we will have everything available in Spanish. So here's the path. Again, you can do the right start math path. You can jump onto it with the tutoring and then back onto the right start math path. Some people wonder, what do you do when you're done with levels G and H? So we're now ready for high school. 
What do we do from here? Well, we have five programs that we recommend. Mr. D Math. We have Jacobs. We have Video Text, Art of Problem Solving, and Foresters. These are the five programs that we recommend. Um, which one is best? I can't really say because it depends upon your child. It depends upon their goals. It depends upon your family. It depends upon your needs. There's many variables. Each, as like anything, have their pros and cons. So we can give you ideas. These are the five that we recommend. Now, is there more? There might be. Just a second. I'm going to mute somebody here. Um, there might be. There, you know, there certainly could be more. We are not familiar. Or these are the ones, again, that we are very comfortable recommending. With the Right Start program, there are manipulatives that are needed. Now, what's really kind of fun about it is levels A through F use all these materials. G and H, you have to add in three other things. I didn't picture it here, but you will be using all of these materials throughout your career. So when you're buying the math set, you only need to buy it once for your household. And then you can take all your kids through it. Now, there's some things you're going to want to double up if you've got multiple children, like you're going to want to double up on the Cotter Abacus. Um, you may want to, again, if you're teaching two children at the same level at the same time, you may need extra place value cards, drawing sets. There's a number of things that you can do. But basically, you're going to need one kit per family. If you are looking, if money is tight, um, we have a list of what the uh, what the features are of each component. Some things like the Cotter Abacus, you can only get from us. Um, the Math Card Games book, you can only get from us. But like these down here, these are tally sticks. They're popsicle sticks. Just go buy some. Um, calculator, we tell you how to use a specific brand, but you can use a different one. That's fine. Um, so there's different components, and we do have this on a blog that it tells you what's important about each one and how you can make your substitutions. We also have a super saver kit that has the items that are just proprietary. They are just ours, and then allow you to go and, um, like, for, the, for example, the um, place value cards, you can go and print your own copy so you can save some money with that. So we've got options to help you with your manipulatives. That's pretty much, I'm going to kind of, today was just kind of give this, excuse me, this presentation was just kind of giving you an overview of what we are going to be doing with the next, or the, with the next uh, webinars. So today at 1230, Debbie is going to talk about mapping yourself through level A and B. And then also talking about the Right Start Tutoring Number Sense. At 2 o'clock Central Time, Rachel is going to be addressing uh, Right Start Math Level C and D, and then the Right Start Tutoring Multiplication Division Books 1 and Book 2. So that's our plan for the rest of today here. Tomorrow, Teresa is going to talk about Levels E and F and the Fractions Book. 12.30 Central, Allison is going to talk about G and H. And at 2 o'clock Central tomorrow, we are have the opportunity of Dr. Cotter is going to answer our questions. And just to kind of give you a heads up, we've received over 100 questions. And we've distilled it down. We kind of compiled and tried to put it all together so we can answer as many questions as possible so if you have time tomorrow at two o'clock, I think that's going to be a really fun um, presentation to listen to. So at this point, that is all I have. I would be curious to see what questions you have, if I can answer anybody's questions. Um, I'm looking here. I don't see any questions at this time. Whoops. Does anybody have any questions? Anything I can help anybody with? You will also be getting a uh, recording of this as well as a coupon code for 15% off through the month of February. And that will be coming, I believe, Kelsey, you're going to be sending that to everyone after this presentation. Am I correct? 
Presentations will be sent out at the end of the convention day and codes were sent out with their link to this presentation, but they are now active as of 11 o'clock today. Okay. All right. And as always, if you have a question with something uh, very specific about your situation, um, give us a call, email us, call us, let us know what we can do to help you because we're very aware that every child in every situation is very different. So we can help you sort through yours. I have a question here from Jenna. Do you have any options or recommendations for learners who the extensive manipulatives are overwhelming? Um, good question. In a lesson, you're not using all the manipulatives. You're using, using maybe one to four at the most per day, per lesson. Usually I would say it's about two to three that you're using at, at the most. Um, what I did at my house is I kept our manipulatives up on top of the piano. So I would open the book for the day and I would look at it and say, because at the very top, it's going to tell you what you need. I would say, okay, Anna, you go get your abacus and Maggie, I need you to go get the, you know, the, the green card decks. And so I'd have the kids get the stuff, gives me enough time to kind of run through the lesson. Okay, we're ready to go. And so by the time they come back with their materials, so it's not like they have this huge box and they have to dig, dig, dig through it every day. They can see what they need. So hopefully that gives you an idea, Jen. I, I don't know if that answered your question or not. Kathleen, you have another point you mind on that one? Pardon me? Do you mind if I step in with a little bit of an answer on that one? Please. In the Right Start um, Buy Sell Chat Facebook group, there are a couple of documents linked that help you with organization of your materials. There's photos of different ways that different people have organized their materials so that it's not just everything all in a box and overwhelming, but there's ways to set it up so that it's easier to find what you need and it's not as overwhelming. So thank you. Thank you, Sharon. And Sharon is one of the tutors who uses Right Start Math um, with her her stu her students. Okay, we got another question here. Thank you, Sharon. How do we how do you see? Can you give me the different math programs after level H again? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Let me just zip right back. It's right here. So it's Mr. D's math, and all of these except foresters are on our website. So Mr. D's will we have a link that takes you over to them, and you can purchase the video text, the Jacobs and Art of Problem Solving from us. Of course, you can purchase them from other people too, but we have them on our website. And yes, your 15% 15 discount coupon that you have will be applied to these. Okay, we've got, um, will I receive a recording of each session I'm signed up for? Yes, you will. You'll get it at the end of the day. So if you signed up for all three, you'll get a link for all three. If you just signed up for one, Kelsey, am I correct? Will they just get the recording then for the one? Yes. Okay. All right. Hannon says, when does this curriculum get a bit more independent? Right now I'm on level A with my kids and I'm just wondering in the future when the lessons will get independent. That's a really good question. Let me just zip back over here. We got this and see the whole thing. There we go. Um, levels A, B, and C are kind of like having that newborn that you bring home from the hospital. And I don't care if it's child number one or ch child number eight you still have to get up in the middle of the night and feed them and change their little pants and rock them back to sleep. And then the next morning, you know, you've got it four times and it, it's kind of the same thing. A, B, and C, you're going to put that time in there. But just like that newborn, when they realize that they cry and mama comes running or daddy comes running, they're going to become more confident sleepers. And pretty soon they sleep through the night. That will start to happen in Right Start Math with level D and E, they become a little bit more independent. Now you're still teaching them, but you're not there for every single thing. F, they become more independent. Again, you're teaching, but they're they're going to be starting to read their worksheets and teach themselves some of the aspects. And then, blessedly, level G and H is for the child to read the lesson. They do the worksheets. And then you have the solutions in hand and you become more of a facilitator. So if the child doesn't get something and you look at it and you're like, I have no idea, have the child call us, obviously with your permission, but have them call us and we'll talk to the child because at this point, G and H, the child is learning how to teach themselves. 
Now with GNH, we do have online classes and Allison will talk about that tomorrow. We do have online classes and we do have uh, independent class videos that can be used in conjunction. So if you're just like, you know, I don't want to deal with this, then you can either put them in the class, which is we have a wonderful time there. Matter of fact, um, the level H class right now that we have on the Monday, Wednesday class, wow, those kids are a top notch thinkers. It is amazing to watch what they're doing and how they feed off of each other. And that's what we want our kids to do is to become independent learners. So yes, we will get more independent, but you need to put that time in for level A, B, and pretty much C, you're going to be putting that time in just like you did with those little ones when you brought them home. Um, Julie, Julie is asking, is there a blog or article explaining the different programs after age? Um, I don't know that I have one. That's a good one. I'll, I'll consider that. Um, see if I can put something together. But again, if you go to our website, um, put in homes, I think it's under homeschool and then high school, all of them are there except foresters. So we, we've got them there for you. Uh, Allison, can you repeat the Facebook group name? The, the one that Sharon was referring to is Right Start Math Talk by Cell. Correct me if I'm wrong, Sharon. I, yeah, I just posted it in the chat. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, oh, yep. Yeah, I think she's got it. Um, I, I can never quite remember the name. I can't remember if it's buy, sell, talk, talk, buy, sell. It's something of the sort. Me either. I had to go look it up. <laughs> yeah. But I but I know that if you just put in right start math and you start putting in buy, you know, B-Y-E, it will come up. Um, there is also, we have our Facebook page, the right start math. Oh, let me, second, let me back up a second. The right start math, talk, buy, sell, or whatever its name is, is actually not ours. Somebody else owns it and runs it. And I like people to know that it's not ours. So that if you want to put something on there, Julie, and say, oh, Kathleen was fantastic. I can't go on there like, yeah, right. Or if you say, mm, we could have done a little better with that. Again, I can't remove it. I can address it, but I can't remove it. So the point of that is, is you're going to get a very honest, unfiltered, reaction to the Right Start Math program. Um, as I was saying, we do have the Right Start Math Facebook group. And in there, we have groups just for level A, just for level B, C, D, E, F. I think there's a G and H also. And we do post on those regularly. Those are kind of nice because then you can kind of track with other people and see how they're doing. So there are a number of different groups. There is another group also for struggling learners. And I think it's Right Start Mathematics for struggling learners. I think if you just put Right Start Math struggling, it'll come up. Now that is a closed group, which means that you have to pass the gatekeeper, who is Debbie, you have to pass the gatekeeper to get in. The reason we have that is because we want that to be a very safe place so that if you have challenges, Somebody else doesn't come in there and go, I don't get it. I don't know what you're talking about. No, everyone there has challenges and they can support each other properly without any outside judgment. So there are a number of different places that you can get some input. Uh, let's see here. Allison, we talked about the Facebook group name. Jennifer, is it too late to add a session you didn't sign up for? No, go ahead and sign up for it. Uh, Kelsey, am I correct? Uh, any sessions for today, you would need to contact us directly. Tomorrow's sessions are still open until 5 p.m. today. Okay. Um, Kelsey, can you type your email in there so that they can contact you directly to get signed up? Yes. So Yes, we, we certainly can. So thank you. Very good question, Jennifer. Um, Sharon put the, the name. Oh, she's looking it up. Hannon, thank you. Uh, let's see. How do we get... Oh. How do we get the tutoring started? Can we start tutoring early with B and C? The tutoring, let me go back and fill that one in here just a second. So here's, that's the Spanish, hang on a second. Oops, it's right there. Um, the tutoring is for a child who's two years or more behind. So if you've got a child, let's say an eight-year-old, you can put them in level B, they'll be fine. Now, if you have a 10-year-old, we don't have time to run them through level B, C, D, E, F. 
you could use the tutoring if you're per perhaps have a child in another uh, school environment, whether it be private school, public school, charter school, um, maybe you're, you're committed to another program, but you really like what we're talking about, you could use the tutoring in that situation. But this is assuming that the child is older and needing and, and having some challenges. Something hasn't stuck with them. And so how do you get the tutoring started? You just buy it, off you go. We we sell it as kits. Or if you know that you're going to go the Right Start Math program, you can go and get all the materials and then you just need that book that comes in there. It's going to use the same manipulatives. So just to make sure, you're really not going to do tutoring before anything. It's in a replacement of something. So... Again, because Right Start Tutoring number sense is pulled from levels A, B, and C. You wouldn't do both A, B, and C and number sense. Multiplication book one comes from D. So you could do level D or you could do this one if you're behind. If your child's on task, you want to do the Right Start Math path because that has more information in it. It, it gives... The tutorings kind of strip it out and just give you the meat and potatoes. Whereas the right start math with that whole thing, that's going to give you everything, the meat, the potatoes, the salad, the, the jello on the side and the ice cream and the cookie and the, you know, it's going to give you everything. It's everything the child needs. This just strips it down. Excuse me. Sorry. This, this just strips it down to. Um, I'm sorry, this this just strips it down to what they need to carry on in that path. Uh, let's see here, Jenna. I do keep them separate and I pull out what we need for the lesson. Oh, okay. For my learner, this is this is talking about the, the child who's overwhelmed with everything. For my learner, most of the games and cards are just too much, too busy, too much to see. He would perform more paperwork. Um. Every now and then we do see that. And sometimes it's because the child is comfortable and doesn't want to play the games. Sometimes what happens is I, the parent, are like, okay, got another game. All right, hold on a second, honey. Um, let me, and I try to figure it out. And it's like, well, try this, try that. No, that's wrong. And I, I'm not presenting it cleanly. Now, I don't know how you're doing it, but I know when I do it, sometimes it gets to be a mess. We have videos that will show you how to play all the games. They range from two to five minutes. And it's a nice way for you and the child to sit down together and say, okay, this is how we're playing the game. All right, get the cards out. Let's go. So then they've already seen it. Then it's not as much of a variable. Maybe that helps. Suzanne says that kind of in response to Jenna, Suzanne said, my kids are ready to move on to something else by the time we get to the games and they aren't interested in playing. And sometimes that happens. Um, what I would suggest in that situation is, you know, if they're done or maybe you've run out of time, do it later in the evening, do it in the afternoon when the little ones are napping, um, do it when dad gets home. I mean, what power for your children, especially your boys, to teach dad how to play a game and then beat him. So you don't have to do it at the exact same time. Maybe you do it the next morning. You know, you get up, you have breakfast, you do you play your game from yesterday, and then you do today's lesson. Find a way that fits with your child, your lifestyle, your environment. Find something that works and don't be, okay, we're doing math from here to here and we're going to fit a game in no matter what. Adapt it. Be flexible. Um, Suzanne's saying that, yes, sometimes I'm not ready with the rules and my delay throws them off. Yep. That's the biggest thing that I find myself. And so what I like to do, like I said, is I watch the game, preferably with the, with the kids, watch the videos. And now the videos are a subscription-based service. They're $4.99 a month, but you we have them grouped by levels. So if you're in level C, you just purchase the level C ones and off you go. Um, and you can turn it off when you want to it's half the price of like netflix so it's you know it's it's yes it's five dollars a month but boy for me that is so worth it i mean even by the time i've played two games it's worth it um okay kelsey gave us our her email events at rightstartmath.com 
Uh, we have a question. What number can we call if we need help with the lesson? That is, let me just put it in the chat here. It is 888-272-3291. You'll be talking to homeschool parents just like you. We can help you walk through it. If you stump them, you come to me. If you stump me, you go to Dr. Cotter. So we will help you no matter what it takes. We will help you uh, with your questions. Um, Shirley says, can we get a link for tomorrow's Zoom meetings? I can't find them on the website. Uh, Shirley, contact Kelsey at events with an S at rightstartmath.com and she can help you out. Jennifer, where are the game videos? It's really nice. I didn't know that they were available. On our homepage on our website, rightstartmath.com. Kelsey, are they at the bottom anymore? I don't think so. I think they're on the games page. Uh, um, not on the slider anymore, no. Okay. So I think it's they're on the games page and we have it. Um, Kelsey, if you have the link, could you put it in the chat for us as to where we can find them? Yes. Uh, Jennifer, pardon me? Yes, I can. Thank you. Jennifer says, we like teaching dad games. That is so much fun. It brings that joy and that power and the happiness to your child with the games. The game tutorials, Jenny, we're putting those in for you. Um, Find this on the website to subscribe to the games. Yes. So that is all coming. Kelsey, I'll give it to you here in just a minute. But I think it's on our on our homepage. Let me just look real quick. I'm going to stop sharing. Let me just go peek real quick. Um, it is. This is what happens. You run double screens. You end up looking under games. I think it's under games. On, on our homepage, let me just show you real quick here. Let me put this up here and I'll share my screen again. Basic. Okay. Here is the, you guys can see my screen? No, yes. I've lost my mouse. Can you guys see the website? Yes. Okay, thank you. It's funny because I can, I can kind of see it, but I can't quite see it with just the way I've got things set up. So here's the website, rightstartmath.com. Down here under games, learn more. I think this is, yep, here it is. Um, we have a blog. We also have the instructional videos. So I'm going to click on that. And here they are coming up very slowly. So here's your level A games, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Here is ones for all levels A to H. So let's just say you've got two or three kids. Well, you're going to want to do this one. This one is, I think, $8.99 a month. The other ones are $4.99 a month. Or maybe you just want addition games, or I just want multiplication games. So there's different ways that you can get to the videos. So I'm going to go back a minute because, let's see if it'll let me. Come on. Oh, it's not letting me. We'll do it this way. Here we go. This Now, this is still on the Right Start Math page. I went to card games. And down here, I thought we had, I thought we had a sampler, but I'm not seeing it. Let me just type in the word sample. Click on the games tab at the top, right underneath the Right Start logo. Right here? Yeah. That's where it was. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, it's a different one. Different. Thank you. <laughs> Glad somebody else can help me run my, my uh, <laughs> website. Thank you. So here's, here's another link. So again, this was in the games tab. Um, instructional videos here at sample pack. That's what I was looking for. Sample pack right there. So this is going to show you how to play six of the games. So corners, that's a fun one. The short chain solitaire. Here's an introduction to it. Subtraction bingo. What's on top and a fraction game of one. I'm going to go back a minute here, but also I want to point out that we have blogs that explain the games and there's over a hundred different ones in here. Those of you that have used the program are very aware that sometimes the, the card games are written pretty dry, but I mean, it, they're all accurate, but it, they're, sometimes they're just hard to follow. We made a point of when we do the blogs. So let's just uh, see real quick here. So this is game. 
we have the game number in here, A57. So I'm going to go back a second here. I'm going to go back. And let's just say I want to play game A A57. I'm going to do a search. I'm going to type in A57. And it's going to bring up the game slowly. I don't know why my computer is very slow today. There we go. It'll show me which, the, oh, here it is, mental edition. Click. And now it's going to, it's actually Rachel that wrote this one. You can see here, Rachel wrote this one. And it's going to tell you more like friend to friend how to play the game with a lot of pictures, which is really nice. So we've got these games available for you in a blog. So if you don't aren't aren't able or interested or only need, need to know how to play a few games, just go and check them. Like another one here, um, A9, I happen to know is the corners game. So A9, huh, that one's, okay, here it is, double corners. Oh, that's a variation. Here's corner speed. Here's the corners game. So it'll show you how to play it. There's a couple of them. Here we go. There's a couple of them. There was one year where I did winter games and this one is a video. So I actually have a video right here. I made a video on how to play this game. Um, some of the winter games are a little bit weird because I was doing them myself. And so I'd play like right hand versus left hand, or I'd play against, uh, I had a stuffed duck, I think in one of them. And so I've got kind of a humor, at least I, I think it's funny, got a humor aspect to it, but you, you've got options to help you play the games. And of course you can always call us and say, okay, what, how do I play this game? We'll help you with it. Can I say something here real quick? Yes. Yep. One thing that I find, and I know I felt it when I first started using the curriculum, is just this kind of this overwhelm. Oh my goodness, there's how many games? But a lot of them are variations. There's a lot of variations on corners. There's a lot of variations on the game of one. There's a lot of, so it's like, there's like maybe six or eight that are the core games. You're going to just yes. play different variations of those core games. So kind of beat back the overwhelm monsters and say, hey, I can do this because you can. <laughs> Yeah. And thank you, Sharon. And and that's one thing that I kind of consider there's, there's really only about, oh, I don't know, 15 different games. All the rest are just variations thereof. Okay. So I, that's all the questions I have here. Um, Actually, you kind of breezed over one that I had answered in the chat and I wanted yes. to make sure my answer was correct. It okay. was from Karen Rushing. I got a late start and missed the first part is RS2 level A to be used for what age group? Is it kindergarten or oh, first grade? It is level A is a kindergarten with a lot of first and some second grade. Yeah. So basically level A, Karen, is going to, I think it was, you said it was Karen, um, is going to be for a brand new, never been used child. So if they've you know, dabbled around with their brother and sister stuff, but they really haven't had any formal math, you're going to want to start them in level A. And it doesn't really matter if they're four or if they're seven, if they haven't had a solid math program. Now, let's just say they have had a solid math program with XYZ math curriculum. Then they're, they've done a kindergarten. Then I would put them in level B. I would not redo A because A assumes it's a, you've had a solid kindergarten program. So hopefully that answered that question. Sorry, I missed that one. I thought maybe you just skipped over it because I had answered it in the- in Nope, the... nope, nope, I must've missed no, it. I, and I think you might've misspoke there at the end. I think you said level A assumes a solid kindergarten. And it, I think you meant to say level B assumes a kindergarten. Assumes that they've had the solid kindergarten. Yes, yep. Um, we got one here. What if kids are going through is, uh, are going through it well without much instructions? Uh, a and B. Um, that's kind of a more unique situation. Give us a call, but just kind of the short answer without, without knowing hardly anything. Um, if you've got a child and they're just flying through level A, then let's just say we've got a seven-year-old, even, even a five-year-old, and we got you know a bright one, and they're just going through A, and they're just whoosh, just going through it. It's harder on you, but take two or three lessons, kind of combine them and go. Because the last thing you want to do is to bore, especially a very bright child. Same thing with B, but be careful. Don't just go, oh, he knows this. And then you go through it. Oh, okay, we're going to start right here because you missed foundation that's been laid. And again, we can help you with that if you need to accelerate because the child is bored. We can do that. Um, 
I think that hopefully that answered your questions, Pyra. And we got uh, Noreen. Let's see. I also had a late start. Eight-year-old was doing B. Can only be doing it one to two times a week. How can I consolidate the lessons or learn to skip some of the warm-ups? I tend to be a perfectionist, so I need to top my eyes and cross my T's. You sound like you have a, a more unique situation. I would like to talk with you specifically because, you know, why can't you? Is it is your household very busy? Is it... Um, that your child's very gifted is, you know, there, there's multiple reasons. And then from there, then we can decide the best action. Uh, Heather, do the tutoring books offer different games or is it the same games that we all know and love? They are similar. Um, what I did is with the games, a uh, number sense, they're, they're the same games, but sometimes I broke them out to an easier version or a harder version of it. So it's variations of the games that you know. When I got, I think there's there might be some brand new ones in there. I don't remember how many because it's been a while since I've done that book. Excuse me, but I know the multiplication division, we have some new games in there. Um, again, not many, but there are some new games. And again, there are, there's a lot of variations. We split a lot of games out. One thing I did in the multiplication division book, which personally, I thought was kind of cool. We have, I assume again, we have older kids. They're probably, you know, 10, 11, 12 year olds. So we have some of the games where they do level one, level two, level three, or maybe they have, they level up or they have a boss level. There's a Supreme level. And so it's the same game, but that we just add in more and more challenging components, you know, kind of like modeling it after like a video game or some sort of game that gets, the higher you get, the more intense it gets. So we did that with some of the games. Again, assuming that these children are are a little bit older. Um, Noreen says, "How can I talk to you? Uh, give us a call. I'll put the number in the in the um, chat again here. It's but it's 888-272-3291. And again, you the phone is answered by customer service people. If you would like to talk to me specifically, just say, "Can I talk to Kathleen?" And I'll do what I can to help you. My schedule gets to be a little bit weird sometimes, but especially if you don't mind an evening call, I'll call you back in the evening, but I'll do everything I can to help you out. Um, let's see here. I'm going backwards, making sure I didn't miss anybody. Um, Hannon, I'm doing level A with five and seven-year-old, but I'm finding it's becoming too easy for the seven-year-old. It's just right for the five-year-old. Um, what I would do in that case is I would take that eight-year-old, I'd split the two of them out, which is a little harder for you but I'd split the two of them out, let the seven-year-old run and then have the five-year-old go at their pace. It is more work now, but when you've been there and done that with the seven-year-old, by the time you hit it with the five-year-old, you're like, oh yeah, I remember that. So initially it's a little harder, but it'll work out in the end. And then we also don't have that seven-year-old being held back by their, you know, by their sibling. You, you know, they can go ahead and do their thing. Um, let's see here. Phone numbers on the website. Oh, Sharon just said that. Yep. Um, I think we've got everything. Oh, Heather, what are the telltale tell signs that your child is struggling instead of not wanting to work? <sighs> That's so hard because every child is so different. Um, I know one thing I did with my kids is we played with math a lot. So like we sit down at the dinner table, we would have, we would ask things like, like, well, let's say, for example, they didn't want to eat their Brussels sprouts. I'd say, okay, take your age. So let's say they're, they're eight, your age times two, okay, 16, minus five, 11, uh, divided by two, ooh, that would be uh, five and a half, plus a half, six, minus three, eat that many bites. So if you've got a kid who's like, oh, do it okay then we got something else going on here but make it fun so is is the child struggling because they're it's too hard are they struggling because they're bored to death are they you know why are they struggling um or is it like you said a case of i don't i just don't want to do it yuck i i don't want i don't want to do that mom well then have it be again something fun and see if you can see if they've got the knowledge like I was doing with the Brussels sprouts. Another one that we did with our family that was kind of fun. Again, this is when the kids were much younger is we'd say, how many feet are under the table? And it was fun because my dad is an amputee. So when grandpa was there, <laughs> the answer was always, you know, what, you know, heads, 
times two minus one or, oh, the dog's half in, half out. Okay, you know, so we got two legs for the dog, you know, or maybe three legs or the dog's under there, four legs, you know. So we play with it. So for the child who's not wanting to work, see if they can play and have fun with it. There's some there's some reframing that I do sometimes too. We talk about word problems and story problems, and I've stopped calling them problems. I've started calling them puzzles. That's nice. That's really good. And then another telltale sign that I see in tutoring is a child who guesses. If your child is guessing, yeah. that's a sign that something's not doing what it's supposed to do. And that's actually a good good point, Sharon. I'm going to deviate off of that a quick second. We parents, especially moms, we have like a gazillion and one things to do. Oh my goodness. We do not have time for a child to think, well, 11 minus two would be, uh, and how often do we say, come on, you know this, what's 10 divided by two? And then, you know, so we start to feed them the answers. Well, your kids are smart enough to know that if I just sit here with a look on my face, mom's going to give me half the answer. So we as parents need to zip it and let the child have time to think it out. Now, if you want to mentally start planning supper and you know, figuring your grocery list in your head when the kids you know, just thinking, that's fine, but don't jump in and start to answer for them. Don't rephrase, don't keep giving it to them. Come on, you know this one, because they're like, I was thinking about this, but all right, fine woman, whatever, give me the answer. <laughs> okay, the answer is five and a half. And the other thing I do in that situation sometimes is ask them to think out loud. What is it that you're processing? Can you help me know what's going on in your brain so that I can help you if I need to? But just know and that thank you. Thank you, Sharon. You're bringing up really good points. And on the other side of this, let's say we've got a child who's a little bit older and they give you the answer five and a half. How'd you come up with that? I I don't you do not have to understand how they came up with it. That is not their problem. If you don't know their way of doing something that's maybe a more complicated math thing and you can't figure out how they did it, but they get the right answer all the time, let them be. If you want to figure it out, you go, you know, we can talk. But if your child's got it, it they don't have to prove to you that they got it. They need to prove that they have the right answer. So just because you don't understand their method doesn't mean, or maybe you don't even like their method. I mean, that is the dumbest way to figure things out. But if it's consistent and it's good and it's accurate, let them be. Let them have that flexibility with it. So so to answer your, Sharon, if like for me to think it out loud, I'd be looking at you like, I'm not going to think this out loud. Now, I might mutter out loud. Okay, well, let's see. Well, 10 divided by two would be five. And then plus, okay, be okay. So I might mutter out loud. But to have to explain myself to you as a parent would frustrate me. So yeah, again, that's not, that's not, I'm not mind. asking you to explain right. it. I'm just saying right. the muttering. So right. that, and that also helps me to know that we haven't started thinking about the dog and right. the Legos we'd rather be right. playing with. It helps me know that they are still here and engaged. Exactly. And so that's the thing is math, teaching math is a science and it's an art. We know the science. The art is very individual with the teacher, the child, the day, the wind speed, the barometer. Everything makes a difference when you're te dealing with the art of it. And you're going to, and you, we all know if you've got a pile of kids, we didn't get them all the same. They were all different. I mean, it's like, really, I gave birth to all of these kids. Why can't they all be the same? They're not. So you're going to have to keep changing it, changing it, changing it, changing it. And that's the glory, the excitement of homeschooling. It's also the frustration, but you can tune it to fit your kid. Okay, I think we are going to wrap this up. Oh, this session scheduled to be all about the same length. They're all about 30-ish minutes, take or leave, and then question and answer is kind of up to you guys. And you can get the recordings. So if you have to leave, you can get the recording later and finish listening to it if you had to go and solve something. So thank you, everybody. I appreciate your time and I look forward to seeing you at 1230. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.